Hi, I'm Peter Kappas, and I want to show you how to quickly set up your local environment so that you can start doing BDD, or Behavior Driven Development, and test automation in general. It can be a little daunting when you first get started, but this method will get you up and running in just a few clicks, and then you can start experimenting and learning the fundamentals of BDD. We're going to be using Docker containers to simplify this setup with a standalone Selenium Chrome container for running our browser and a second container to run our Ruby runtime and any libraries that we need like Capybara and Cucumber. All the code will be hosted locally inside of a folder that we mount inside of our Ruby instance. I'll assume that you have Docker installed and a basic knowledge of how it works as well as uh, some understanding of the fundamentals of BDD, so we're not going to go into that in a lot of detail. If you need to read up on any of that first, please do so. Otherwise, let's dive in. I'm going to start by cloning this repo, there's a link in the description, into a folder using the terminal. Once that's done, let's cd into that folder and open everything up in an editor. I'm using Atom, but you could use anything you like. You'll notice that thanks to Docker and all the libraries we're using, there really isn't much code in here. So let's go for a quick win first and follow the instructions in the readme. I'll start by using Docker Compose to start up both the browser container and a bash session inside the Ruby container. The first time you do this, it'll build the Ruby container for you, which can take a few minutes, but I've already done this. I'd like to see inside the browser container, so I'm just going to open a new tab in my terminal and open VNC to look at the browser container. You'll notice an empty Ubuntu desktop since we don't have any browser sessions yet. I'm just going to full screen these and put them next to each other to make it a little easier to see what's going on. Now, from inside my Ruby container, I can run the Cucumber command to start running my tests. Immediately, you'll see it start up a Chrome session, open Google, search for puppies, and see dog, and pass the first test. Then we'll do another test, this time searching for dachshund and not seeing fish. Our tests have completed successfully. Let's go ahead and exit the Ruby container and shut down the browser using Docker Compose down so nothing is left running. That's it. Now let's go back to our editor and see what's really going on here. Let's start with the Docker Compose file where you can see that we have two different services or containers defined. I'm calling one browser which contains a standalone image of Chrome with the Selenium web driver sitting on top of Ubuntu. You'll notice we have a debug version, which lets us see inside, and I've also linked to the headless version, which is a tiny bit faster. This is useful if you're just running your tests on a CI server and you don't actually need to see inside of it. We're mapping a couple of ports here back to our host so we can interact with the container. Port 5900 is required for VNC so we can see inside, and 4444 is the control port for Selenium so we can control the browser from our other container. Then we have the Ruby container. This is where we'll host our Ruby runtime and our testing framework, including the tests themselves. Let's briefly check out the Docker file. As you can see, it's pretty simple. We're starting with the base Ruby image, ensuring we have an app directory to hold our tests. Then we're copying our gem file into this folder and running bundle to install any required gems. You can have a look at those gems in the gem file. We're using Cucumber, Capybara, and of course the Selenium web driver to drive the browser. Returning to our Docker Compose file, you can see we're mounting the entire host folder into the slash app directory so that any changes we make to the code are immediately reflected inside the running container. Lastly, you'll notice that we've made the Ruby service dependent on the browser service, so anytime we start the Ruby one, Docker Compose will start the browser for us automatically. The other little bit of magic happens in our env.rb file, so let's have a look in there. You can see we're requiring some gems, and then we're calling a couple of Linux commands to find the IP address of our host machine, which you'll recall has port 4444 mapped onto it from our browser container. Once we have this IP, we can use it to register our Selenium web driver for our tests. The last thing to note here is the base URL for our tests. We're pointing it to Google, but you'll want to change this to whatever host you're using to test your app. Now I want to show you how easy it is to write tests. Cucumber lets you describe features through one or more scenarios using a very simple plain English syntax called Gherkin. Each scenario has multiple steps, and each step is defined using Ruby, which in our case is actually Capybara, which is a very simple domain-specific language, or DSL, for finding and interacting with elements on a web page. For now, let's pretend that we don't have any step definitions, and we've just written one scenario. I'll start up my containers again and run Cucumber. It helpfully identifies missing steps and even gives me some boilerplate code to use. 
So I can put my step definitions anywhere I want and split them out in any way that makes sense to me. As long as there are no name collisions, Cucumber will just pick them up and use them. For now, I'll just recreate that file called stepdefs, and I'll paste in the boilerplate code provided by Cucumber. When I rerun Cucumber, you can see that it still identifies those steps as pending because they have the pending keyword in there. So let's use the pry debugger to develop some tests in real time. I simply add binding.pry to my step definition and run it again. This time, the debugger opens up an interactive session where I can type capybara commands directly to the browser. The first step is to visit the home page, so I'll type that in and run it. You can see it opens up the browser and visits google.com. Now I need to figure out what that search field is called. I'll do this by opening the developer tools and then inspecting the field. I can see that it's called Q, so now I'll use the fill-in method from Capybara to pass something into the field. Great. I'm ready to click on the search button, so we'll use the click on method to identify the button based on the text Google search. Uh-oh, I'm getting an error. This is because there are actually two Google search buttons on the page. One in the popover, and one underneath. Capybara doesn't know which one to use, so it throws an error. In this case, it doesn't really matter, so I can just use the match property and pass in the symbol first to tell it to use the first one. And away we go. Now I can assert that the page should have content dog, and indeed it does. Finally, I'll copy these steps into the step definition, removing my debugging call, and it's ready to go. You'll also notice that I can capture strings that are passed in in quotes and pass these directly into my steps as variables. This gives you a lot of flexibility. Using the same pattern, you can use the web inspector to figure out how to locate elements on the page, and then use the debugger to pass commands to the browser and interact with them while you try out your steps. There are really only a handful of capybara matchers and commands you need to learn to start using BDD and make a world of difference in how your team deploys and tests applications. I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions or ideas for how to improve this technique, please get in touch. Thanks for watching.